presentation, and then we're happy to field any questions from you, Judy, and your team, or students, or both. Great. So what I'd like to say before you start, Ashley, sure. is that, A, we want to welcome you. Thanks. We want to welcome Nielsen IQ to the first virtual Career Tuesday. And the other thing that we'd like to say about Ashley and Megan and Kim is that they are all UConn alumni. So yes. from the years 2016 to 2019, um, these three ladies are UConn School of Business alumni. Mm -hmm. So they have been in your shoes. So um, feel free, um, you know, Megan's gonna do a presentation and you can either ask questions in chat or we're gonna leave some time at the end, whatever you feel um, comfortable with. So with that, Megan, you can start whenever you'd like, okay? Cool. Um, all right, so we will jump in. So just a little overview of who we are. So we are waiting on Kim, um, but my name's Ashley. Um, I am a UConn class of 2019 grad. I was also a marketing major. I also had the digital marketing and analytics concentration, a management minor. Um, and I was pretty involved across campus, as you can see here, and I sit in the Wilton, Connecticut office. Oh, and currently my role is um, I'm a COE lead slash talent development and strategy associate for BASE. So part of my role is coaching, onboarding, and working really closely, managing new analysts as they come into BCs. Um, and then I also am working specifically on recruiting initiatives for the BCs Department of Nielsen IQ. Cool. And similar to Ashley, I am also a UConn grad, class of 2019. Um, so I majored in marketing, minored in Spanish with a concentration in digital marketing. Um, was involved in Husky Ambassador program on campus, um, Greek life, and currently I am in the senior research analyst role, which we'll talk about in more detail um, today in a few minutes here. Um, and that's one of the primary roles that we are recruiting for now and um, for this spring as well. Great. So just a brief overview on who is Nielsen IQ. Um, hopefully you have some idea of who we are and what we do, but we'll just give a brief overview to ground everybody. So Nielsen IQ, we are a global market research consulting firm. Um, we work in the consumer packaged goods space. So if you go into a grocery store or a CVS and you see all those products on the shelves, we have most likely worked with these clients. Um, you know, so from Procter & Gamble to L'Oreal, Johnson Johnson, we touch them all and we help them make those objective data-driven insights to make efficient decisions, whether that's across what new products to launch and, you know, best mix to have on shelf or how well their sales are doing and various retailers. We pretty much do it all um, to help them optimize their sales and growth. So big data, I'm sure you've all heard of big data. You know, it's definitely a buzzword in, in this space. Um, so what a lot of other companies that we compete with do is they kind of just give these clients data dumps. And what we know is that big data by itself is not very useful to our clients. And so that's where Nielsen IQ provides a really strong competitive advantage. So we have all sorts of proprietary methodologies and solutions that help us sort, arrange, and prevent, present visually this big data. We make it very digestible. We explain it with a story. Um, and we provide clear and actual insights to our clients. Um, what we always say, and it's definitely true from working there and, and my experience in Megan's, um, it really is our people to make the, the difference. We invest a lot of time in training um, to really create top-notch consultants, and it's really what keeps us top of industry year after year. And again, like I mentioned, our clients, those CPG retailers and manufacturers are the center of everything we do. So here are some further examples of the clients we work with. Um, as you could see, you know, with names like Vanguard, um, and Verizon, we're, we're even moving into new spaces beyond traditional CPG. We now work a lot with, um, we have a games vertical, we have um, a, we have restaurants, BevL. So we really do a lot and are constantly expanding and, and innovating ourselves to make sure that we're capturing the most um, you know, business as possible. And here's some example client business questions that we could easily answer for our, our clients, again, using the services that we provide. Um, we can answer what the strengths and weaknesses of a client's new product is and does it have the potential to be successful market. So that's specifically what NIQ Bases 
does. Um, so that's mine and Megan and Kim's department on um, that's our innovation sector, which is really, really cool. We see a lot of uh, new products and help them optimize those. Um, we can tell a client how their sales are doing in Target, for example, or, or any other retailer. And if there's new retailers, they should be going after to increase their share and sales and all of those metrics. Um, we can get really granular and tell clients who is buying their product. And we can also help them identify different groups of target consumers to make sure that they're optimizing their reach and making sure that, you know, if it is more a niche offering, that they're meeting those consumers' needs effectively. Um, we can tell them who their main competitors are, competitors are and how their market share is compared to these competitors. And we can also tell them if they're offering the right price um, and how it compares to the market at large. So again, you know, this further just hits home how holistic our consulting and services are. So now jumping into our early career opportunities. So here's a brief overview of our open roles. So the main role that we are recruiting for would be our commercial analyst and intern internship program. Um, so in this role, you would use your analytical and consultative skills to help clients, such as the ones listed, um, make better, faster, and smarter decisions. And team placements will be across bases. Um, which I know I keep referencing, we will explain it further, um, but we are taking all of the new hires into the innovation practice. Um, we're also hiring for a finan financial emerging leaders program. So anyone interested, finance, accounting, econ, any of that, we do have a selective 24 month rotational program. Um, and that's designed to really expose you to all areas of corporate finance, um, you have four different rotations across the two years, and then you get placed into a, a pretty high profile role. Um, so it really is meant to build leaders and, and kind of fast track you into an upward trajectory in corporate finance. And we're also offering a customer success rotational program. I will say just to be transparent, we, you know, our recruiting team, um, just overall nail snack you hasn't been super clear on, on what exactly this will entail. But what I have gathered is that there'll be three rotations across the customer success core analytical teams, which is insights, business intelligence, and consumer response. And that team primarily works um, with more specific clients, um, more just doing monthly and weekly sales tracking, um, you know, helping with selling stores to new retailers and things of that of that sort. So they kind of touch that other side of um you know, client market research initiatives. And we are hiring across all North America offices for summer 2022 start dates. And so, like I said, um, commercial analysts and interns will support BASES. And so BASES is Nielsen IQ's innovation practice, and we are the worldwide leader in analyzing and consulting on new consumer products. We help clients throughout all stages of the product development process. Um, you know, we start with early stage ideation and we'll help optimize communication and positioning, package design, predicting and growing in market sales. We help with marketing plans. Um, and these pieces are dispersed among our main teams that we have, um, you know, because each team is more specified. You know, we have a design team specifically that will obviously help with package design. Um, the A lot of the concept optimization and initial ideation will go through the insights team. Um, our forecasting team will will really help solidify your activation strategy and marketing support plan. So things like that. Um, and in Basie specifically, you know, this is certainly across Nielsen IQ as well. Um, but really in Basies, we have such a great culture. Um, you know, I, I mentioned just our strong people and, and not only are our are people just so skilled and intelligent, but Everybody is super, super supportive, kind, compassionate. We've done a really great job staying connected virtually um, and really prioritizing fun and, you know, making sure that consumers have a, oh, not consumers, employees um, have great work-life balance. Um, and so that's just huge priorities for us. I know, um, you know, even from my experience, I started, you know, I was an intern, was an analyst. I actually left Nielsen IQ for six months and I'm back. So clearly that's something um, super compelling. Um, it really is a great place to be. Um, so can't, can't recommend it more highly. So now I'll pass it on to Megan to talk more about our analyst role and, and kind of what's it like across teams and, you know, as an SRA currently. Yeah, so just to go into some more detail on the various different teams that Ashley mentioned earlier, um, you can see them all listed here. We have seven different practice areas, each specializing in different solutions and different types of methodologies that ultimately help us address all of our clients' business questions, whatever they might be. Um, so I, I'd say most often we 
focused on the insights and forecasting practices as this is where our, our clients are coming to us to understand their new innovation opportunities. And, you know, is this a compelling product launch? Um, should we launch it? And then also sizing the initiative at the same time. So how much can we expect to sell? Um, we also have our, our line and price solutions, which kind of takes a broader portfolio assessment and looks at different pricing strategies across different brands. Um, our design practice, again, as Ashley was touching on. Oh, oh sorry. Um, can you guys still hear me okay? Uh, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was getting some feedback. That was yes. strange. <laughs> yeah, somebody sorry. made me a co-host, so that was me. Okay, no worries. Okay. Go ahead, Meg. Cool. Yeah, so our next, our design practice, um, this again, specializes in different pack designs, both new and existing. Um, we have our demand solutions team, which is pretty specialized and more grounded in foundational research. Um, so we can look at consumers' met needs, their unmet needs, and really uncover different white space opportunities that brands can innovate in. Um, we can also assess specific brands through our demand solutions. So looking at how for example, the Pillsbury brand stacks up against its competitors. Um, with our advertising practice, we use some different neuroscience tools. So things like EEG, facial coding, eye tracking, um, all to help our clients optimize their advertising tactics. So whether it be TV or print, um, we can really get them a deeper understanding of the effectiveness of those advertising strategies. And then finally, Probably one of our more unique practice areas is the games practice. Um, so I, I'm not a gamer myself. I, I can't speak too much to this one, but um, can really look at all things pertaining to gaming, whether it be hardware, software, et cetera. Um, so next, just to go into a bit more detail on the analyst role specifically within Insights, as that is where I currently sit. Um, in short, the, the Insights analysts will work closely with our client facing team members to assess in market potential for these new innovation opportunities that our clients bring to us. Um, and ultimately we're, we're storytellers. So we'll provide recommendations around how to prioritize different innovations, um, how to optimize them if there is room for improvement, and then ultimately bring those innovations to market moving forward. Um, so here are some typical client questions that we might help answer. So how appealing is a new initiative? Um, what are its strengths and different areas to focus on? Um, and then also we can look at different consumer segments. So for example, if we're testing a different um, kid-focused snack initiatives, we can look at say parents of kids ages two through 12 to see how the initiative performs among that specific group. Um, so just to touch on what my typical day-to-day -day looks like, um, typically consists of analyzing and preparing results, um, brainstorming different hypotheses and, and recommendations that I can pose back to my internal teams um, for discussion. So kind of hashing out the story, figuring out what the story is from the data that we get, because um, really that's what we're ultimately bringing to our clients in a more digestible way. Um, some more maybe tactical tasks might include um, preparing client deliverables, um, researching the category. So this is probably one of the parts I enjoy most is when we take out a new project in a new category, um, we really pride ourselves on becoming category experts. Um, so for example, if I was on a frozen meals project and I didn't know much about the frozen meal space, I might you know, look at some pricing data um, read into different competitors within that space just to really get a holistic understanding of what I'll be working in. Um, so for all of our, our new analysts, uh, I, I can speak very highly of our training program and you know, those first few months of being on the job. Um, we have a roughly one month training program followed by a few months of working very closely with not only your manager, but your different client service teams. Um, really as you take on your first three projects to make sure you are being successful in those different projects. Um, I really appreciate it in my experience, how hands-on these first few months were just to really help solidify all of the learnings coming out of training initially. 
Um, and as Ashley was mentioning earlier with our work environment, um, I'm really proud to say that it's both fun and collaborative. So whether you're in person or working remotely, as we all have been for the past, gosh, two years now, um, the fact that we service so many different clients and categories too always means that there's something new and exciting going on. Um, and usually these projects are often very relevant. So whether you're a category buyer or you know you you buy that brand yourself, um, it's always really cool to see those things come to life in market when you're doing your grocery shopping and seeing products on shelves. Um, so if we go to the next slide, I'll just touch on some of the critical skills for someone in the analyst or senior analyst role. Um, so at a high level, critical thinking and you know leveraging data and consumer insights to ultimately tell a story are at the very core of what the analyst does. Um, on top of that, just overall staying organized and the ability to manage multiple projects at once, just because we often take on multiple different projects across different clients and categories. Um, so it really helps to stay organized and keep everything straight. Um, also collaborating internally across different teams. So as you saw earlier, we have seven different practice areas. A lot of them we often work cross-functionally. So a project might have a forecast and a design component. Um, so really just being able to work with those different team partners to bring the report together and tell the, the client one cohesive story. Um, I'll also just say that having a general interest in consumer packaged goods is a huge plus. Um, on many occasions, again, since I first started, I found myself browsing the store aisles just to see what new innovations have launched or you know, buying, buying the different brands that we've worked on. So it kind of just brings a fun aspect to your daily life in that sense too. All, All right. right, if Kim's on, I think, pass it to Kim. I think she might have joined. Yeah, I'm, I'm good to just finish up these slides. Um, okay, perfect. Yeah, just a couple more things. Um, I know most people on here are marketing majors, but in case you want to share this information broadly, um, just a little more detail on our FLP program. Um, so just to reiterate, again, there's those four, six months assignments. Um, some other unique aspects of the program are that there's also four training courses integrated um, throughout the program that really encourage lifelong learning and you know just make sure that these new associates are up to speed in all these areas of corporate finance. Um, so it's a really unique piece as well. And um, there's continuous feedback with a very strong performance management program. There's also a formal mentoring program, um, which I think is really great to get to know others in the organization and really see if you can you know, see yourself moving forward and help you um, figure out what areas you might like more or less. And then here are links to apply. So we are using Ripple Match um, for those who might have visited us at the career fair. Um, I'm sure you might have remembered, you had to scan a QR code, maybe register. Um, if not, again, super easy platform to navigate. You just search Nielsen IQ and then here are the links to apply. Um, again, the oh, I, I, don't, I don't think I mentioned this, but the FLP also has an internship program. Um, so that's great as well, as well as the commercial analyst. There is an internship for that as well. And with that, um, we could definitely move forward to the question segment of this session. Um, I have a quick question, Ashley. Besides mm -hmm. Ripple Match, some of these jobs are listed as well on Handshake, correct? Uh, yes, they are. Yeah. They are. That, okay. yeah, that's just the primary platform you know, we use on our back end, so it's certainly more streamlined, I'd say, going to Ripple Match. But applying through Handshake is also totally appropriate. Okay. And um, is there also a spring 2022, like a co-op type of internship? Yes, there is. Um, so that was something that's recently emerged. It should also be posted on Ripple Match at this time. Um, yeah. So we're not hiring. It's not a robust program. It's not anything that's like the summer program, but we are hiring um, about four to five interns that we'll, we'll have for the spring semester. And those are full-time paid internships, correct? Those, yes, it, it's either full-time paid or you could, you know, you could get college credit for it. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, questions? 
Uh, feel free to ask your questions or put them in. Okay, Benjamin has a question. Um, Go ahead, Benjamin. Yeah, regarding uh, those application links, are we gonna um, get? Are we going to get emails those, or do you just want us to go like search them up on Ripple Match? Like, it would probably be easiest to just search them on Ripple Match. Them it's okay. super easy to find. You know, if it was more challenging, um, certainly we would uh, we we would send them out. But it's it's very easy to find. And if you do okay. have any questions and can't find it, you could definitely email one of us. Great, sounds good. Thank you. No problem. Uh, there's a question in the chat. What made each of you stay at Nielsen and why did you pick it in the first place? Yeah, Megan, I can, yeah. yeah, I can kick us off. Um, so I, I will say I also interned with Nielsen. Um, so had a very early experience beyond just the full-time analyst role. Um, I will say first and foremost, it's I think we lost. Uh oh. Technology. Ashley, you want to jump in until she's back? Yeah, sure. Um, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so you know, not to, to you pick up off right what she was saying, but I actually interned with Megan, which was fun. Um, and so I think both of us had a really great experience very early on as interns. Um, I think, you know, how we even got the interns internship was that Nielsen was very present at, at UConn and was very excited about hiring UConn students. So I think that was certainly a plus for the two of us. Um, and in the internship, I think what really set Nielsen apart from other programs is that we actually got a real taste of what it would be like to be an actual analyst. And this wasn't the same across teams. You know, this was spe specifically on our bases teams. We got to, you know, look at and complete real project work. We worked with, um, you know, upper level client service teams and they treated us like we were analysts. And that was a really great way to simulate what the actual workload was like. And, and it was true. And, you know, once we both began as analysts, we were, we kind of picked up where we left off. Um, and I think really what came through as we saw the internship was just a very supportive group of people. Um, there is of course a lot to learn, a very steep learning curve as is every job, right? Um, but there is just so much support, um, just great people that want to see you succeed. And I think that's the difference is that I think, unfortunately, a lot of companies don't prioritize early career and don't prioritize the fact that students have not had much professional experience beyond maybe a brief internship. And, you know, it's, it's hard to transition from college to full time. And I think, um, you know, we do a really great job making sure that students feel comfortable and are supported and are really set up for success. So I think that's personally, and, and I'm sure Megan and Kim would agree, um, you know, kind of why, I, why I've why i stayed. Um, and then even to add on, there's just also a lot of flexibility within the company. I mean, I started as an analyst and now I'm obviously doing something more kind of HR focused, we'll say. Um, and that was a super unique opportunity that doesn't happen a lot. Um, you know, a lot of times if you don't want to do the role you're in, you got to leave. Um, and I kind of was, you know, offered something pretty custom, which shows just the, another very positive reflection on the culture. That's great. Um, Kim, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, and sorry guys that I was late. I was actually in a client call that was going over. So that is another day to day that you'll get when you're a manager on the um on the team. A lot of the times you can't say no and can't stop talking to them. So I apologize for being late. Um but yeah, I think for me, so I've been at Nielsen for uh, over five years now. I also graduated from UConn in 2016 and similar to Megan started at, and Ashley started as an analyst, worked um, up to an SRA, and now I'm in a manager role. Um, and for me, again, like the culture is amazing. I think the people here, you're constantly learning. Um, now as a manager, I would say what's making me stay is that client interaction, even if they make you late to other meetings, um, you're constantly learning from them as well and getting a real insight on um, 
innovations and what they're going to be launching. And when you start to see the products that you directly helped them with in store, um, and they're really taking your advice and your recommendations, I think that's the most rewarding part. Um, they genuinely do take our recommendations to heart and make sure that they're changing their concepts and their products to be the most successful. So they really look at us as the experts. So I think that that's one of the most rewarding parts for me. Sounds good. Um, any other questions? Um, Hi, this is Adam. Hi, Adam. Um, thank you guys for the presentation. I found it very insightful. I was just wondering more about the internship and kind of going into a full time position at the end of the, the summer. Would that lead into something if uh, you succeed in the role? Yeah, so essentially the internship program, which I think is a great feature, it is a fit to hire program. So ideally, the interns that we bring on, we want to fill our full time pipeline for the next summer. Um, so we're definitely looking for top talent at the internship level um, to make sure that, that happens. So, yeah, so there's very clear objectives and goals that are laid out for the intern to make sure that you achieve. And you have a lot of uh, check ins, I, typically weekly with your manager and, you know, other team members as well, giving you constant feedback. So. I would say typically it's it's very attainable to achieve those goals. And yes, at the end of the summer in your last check-in, um, you'll find out if you were extended an offer or not, and then you know you have X amount of time to accept, and then you would start that following summer. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. Looks like for those that have not had an internship um, in the summer, they are still eligible to apply for the full-time roles for when they graduate, right? Uh, sorry, say that one more time. Yeah, for those who haven't had the internship between their junior and their senior year, they can still apply for your full time. Oh, roles. yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's certainly not a, a requirement um, to have been an intern. Um, again, certainly is helpful, but absolutely not a qualification at all. So we encourage all to apply. And I'll just add, I was not an intern, so and I've been here for five years now, so you definitely don't need to be. Um, but um it, it's gr a great program to do but i definitely encourage everyone to still apply um even if you were not an intern sounds good okay benjamin has a question um, so okay. how would you all compare like the experience starting at nielsen like from being an intern to like starting coming in not having had that internship and just doing like the one month training like was like in terms of like maybe preparation or culture or you know other factors I oh I go ahead. yeah I, I think I can help answer because I I wasn't an intern but I um I actually managed Megan when she was an intern so I have a pretty good idea of like the program and what they go through and I I think that the training that we have in that one month program um or the one month training session is really valuable and very detailed so when you're going through that training session um you learn everything that the in the interns that were previously there are in that training session with you as well so everyone's learning from scratch everyone's learning from square one you go into a lot of details that you might not have even seen in the internship um and in addition to that, you also work on a live project while you're still in that training. So you have a buddy, you're working on a live project. So um, I think that even without the internship, you're still getting a really cohesive and um, it's a really integral part of the training. So we make sure that everyone is fully up to speed before you're working on um, projects independently. Great. Okay, thank you. And, and I would just add as well, um, being an intern and full time, I mean, it's a year until you start again. So um, you certainly don't remember everything. So it's extremely beneficial to go through the training again. And like, you know, I had some memory and I had maybe a little bit more grounding than others, but it definitely did not, you know, I, I didn't feel super ahead of, of anybody else. So I think it's, of course, beneficial, but not at all um, going to set you back if you weren't an intern. Um, uh, there's a question in the chat about whether you read or ask for cover letters in your application process. Yes, um, I'm actually not certain about cover letters. Um, I would, I would have to just check Ripple Match. Um, I think that, I mean, 
if we're asking for cover letters, we are definitely reading them. Um, but I do know that resumes are definitely looked at at a heavier capacity than a cover letter. Got it. Going off of that, sorry if I can chime in. Um, what would you like? Can you give us kind of a clear cut like idea of what the application process looks like overall? So, you know, is there like um, a one way interview or like a phone screen? How many interview rounds? That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can speak to that. Um, so it'll start off, um, you know, if, if we have seen your resume and application like you, we will start with a phone screen and it's more just to, you know, get get a feel for who you are and also just just let you know what to expect in the process. Um, so it's that's really not going to make or break, but it's just kind of a first touch point um, with people on the TA team. Um, then you'll move to a virtual interview um, on. I don't know if anybody's used Hire View before, but that is um, the platform we use. I mean, answer a few questions and, and a lot of time, and then we'll review that on our end. If you meet that threshold, you would move to an analytical assessment. And then if you meet that threshold, you'll move to a panel interview. So that will be with two upper level um, manager plus typically. Um, and that consists of, it's about an hour and 15 minutes. There's some behavioral questions, analytical, um, a brief case study activity that you don't get beforehand. It's just kind of on the fly, um, just to, you know, really assess that analytical capability. Um, and, and, you know, really it's, it's obviously important uh, to, to see your thought process and how you work under pressure all of that. And then that is the last step of the process. And then hopefully you would hear back within a few weeks. Um, you know, again, full transparency, we have a ton of applications. So the process is not moving the quickest, but we're doing as much as we can to streamline it and, you know, make sure everybody is um, getting you know, responses at a, at a timely rate. Great. Thank you. That was really helpful. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I think the last question is in light of the volume of the applications, et cetera, in this case with Nielsen IQ, do you look at LinkedIn at all or are you really, as you said, focusing on the resume? As, as students are going through the process, we certainly will look at LinkedIn. So I think it's best practice just to have that as polished as your resume at all times. I think in general, just for broader job search, I think that's just always, always best practice. But we certainly do look at your LinkedIn. Okay, great. Okay. Um, if nobody has any other questions, in the interest of time, um, I want to first thank the three of you from Nielsen IQ. And for the students that have joined us today, I want to point out that each of these um, alumni and employees of Nielsen IQ has shared their email address in the um, chat uh, bar. So, um, we always tell students, we love to have you on Virtual Career Tuesday, but it's also what you do afterwards regarding the application and the process. And I see Ashley shaking her head that can really make you stand out. So between the email or you know catching up on LinkedIn, connecting, et cetera, um, please use the tools that you have to make yourself stand out to Nielsen IQ. And, um, Thank you very much for joining us today and uh, all of you and have a great day. Okay. Judy, there's another question still. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was going to ask about the emails, which, and you answered that, but where, I don't see them in the chat. Where are those? Um, they're yeah, at I, the top. I sent them privately to you, Judy, so I can just post them broadly. I am so sorry if I can figure out how to copy and paste. I can. I actually yeah, I can. can. Sorry, and I'm going to do that right now. Um, I did it. Now I have to. I think I, I just put it in there. So I, I do see them. So you yeah. see them now? Um, Except for maybe Ashley. I don't know. Something might have gotten cut off. But it's Ashley Lane, Megan Lynch, and Kimberly Lowry. Okay. But anyway, certainly if you're interested, don't wait, put in your application and then there's email, there's LinkedIn and there's follow up. So um, it all makes a difference. So again, thank you very, very much. Thank you all the students that joined us today and enjoy the rest of your day. And this was being recorded. 
I think, yes, Tricia, yes. So if you want to mention to your friends, it will be on our, our YouTube page. So all good.